The Thorpe Lunatic Asylum, also known as St Andrew's Hospital, has a long and complex history. It was located in Norfolk and it was originally established as the Norfolk County Asylum in 1814. The asylum was designed to house individuals with mental health issues who were referred to as lunatics at that time. Like many asylums of its time, it was harsh and challenging in the early 19th century. Mental health care was not well understood and treatments could be quite rudimentary and sometimes inhumane by today's standards. And as you can quite well imagine, many of the treatments or the living conditions ended up in death for some of its patients. Now these patients had to be buried somewhere and many of them ended up here in Reefham Old Cemetery. Now this old cemetery has historical links to both workhouses and lunatic asylums. Many of those buried in the cemetery were residents of the Aylsham Union Workhouse and patients from the Thorpe Lunatic Asylum as well as the Norfolk and Norwich Hospital. Now, Alsham Workhouse had up to 80 inmates and the workhouse was built in 1776 in the angle between Commercial Road, which is now Bowway, and New Road. In 1805, prisoner reformer James Neild was much impressed by what he found at Alsham, saying that it was the best workhouse that he'd ever seen. The building, however, was demolished in 1842. That's mother and daughter. What do you mean? How about so that's here? That's Harriet and that's Susanna, the daughter of William and Harriet uh, Teddenham. That's the wife of Har William Teddenham. And then Susanna, beloved daughter of William and Harriet Teddenham, age 14. As with many of the cemeteries nowadays, this has been allowed to go back to nature. It's quite daunting to walk around somewhere so beautiful all overgrown with nature and yet poking up out the ground are these little teeth of tombstones i i, I can't explain the feeling it, it's it's beautifully haunting so as many of you know moomin my black lab died so we are now introducing Dolly to the Graveyard Explorer and in the background there you can see my new puppy Scrabble. We are training them up to be Graveyard Explorers but Dolly's still a bit excitable as she is, believe it or not, still only a puppy. So give her a chance but she's loving it at the moment. She's still got to learn that when I bend down to look at the graves it doesn't mean to come over and play and lick my face. But she'll get there, bless her. So looking at these gravestones, it is really hard to imagine that some of these people came from the workhouses and some of them came from the lunatic asylum. But now it's gone back to nature and it is truly beautiful and if you try and stick to the paths dolly dog and if you try and stick to the paths it is quite a lovely place to walk around so as i walked around here looking at these teethy doomstones i found myself contemplating the lives of those buried here imagining the hardships they endured and the societal conditions of their time there's often, I felt, a deep respect for the individuals who lived through such challenging circumstances and for the history that shaped their lives. Knowing that these people were among the most vulnerable in society gave me strong feelings of just empathy and compassion and it gave me a sense of connection to the past. And I feel it makes history feel more immediate and more personal. Cemeteries like these that have such a strong link to our, our past gives me a sense of quiet contemplation and it allows me to reflect on broader themes of life, death and even human resilience. So despite the sombre history that can be seen here there can be a sense of peace in knowing that these individuals are now at rest 
So as we walked around here, as you heard earlier, me and my husband, we felt curious about the individual stories behind each headstone. And as we go around and we see like the same names and all of that, my husband is very good at working out who is who um, and what relation they are to each other. And you often find that people like children that have died their mothers and fathers are often buried beside them or you can sometimes find them in the same cemetery so that's really interesting to take note of the names that you are seeing because I often think oh, I've seen that one already here and that's where I then go back and you can kind of piece together the dates it is so so interesting so I work in mental health and I work in uh, the care sector and things like this really does inspire me to look into the social conditions of the past and what the workhouse was li like back then. We have advanced so much within the medical system that we look back and think, oh my God, why did we do that? How did the people get away with it? But it's really important to know that and remember that at that time, that was thought correct and that was pioneering treatment. And without those times, we wouldn't be where we are today. And as horrible as it is, for these patients and I have so much empathy for them they have helped shape the way that we deal with mental health today what do you got? Bone. Is that bone? Is that bone? Is that bone?